Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have a 67 kilogram B class Muay Thai contest scheduled for five two minute rounds. Well, here we go, round one. Slight, slight unorthodoxness about about Brad, about Brad's style. Very, very loose in his footwork. Been very elusive. Yeah, he's, uh, this is this is the this is kind of amateur style where they get bouncing in and out of range because it, in a, in amateur Muay Thai it's more about the the accumulation of shots landed on target rather than the effect of the shots that are, that are thrown. So they can't afford to stay in and trade. This is why they have the, the footwork in and out, in and out all the time. Yeah, he's got a bit of a low guard as well. And I know uh, a few fights back, I saw Jazz knock a guy out. We uh, a round kick straight to Ed. Right. So uh, he wants to be careful of them. I mean, Brad's an experienced guy. He'll be he'll be very aware of all these things coming from this from this ex from his 50 fights amateur experience. He just showed uh, the the strength of his clinch work, pulling Jazz's head down with yeah. relative ease. Then I think this this could be the the shaping of a of a strategy start developing. Just wondering if, if the the Siam Camp Corner spotted the the relative ease that he had in pulling his head down. Obviously under B class rules. Obviously under under B class rules, you are allowed to knee to the head. Jazz seemed to look very relaxed in that first round. But, uh, well, it, it, Brad was, were a bit tense when he bouncing about. Yeah, I think I think we'll we'll start to see him, see Brad start settling down now. Yeah, We've got that feeling out process out, out of way now. Yeah. I mean, given that these guys are on a professional circuit, they've still only had six fights. They're showing again experience beyond uh, beyond what the records are saying. Yeah. Seconds away. Round two. I like the extension that Jazz gets on his on his kicks. Really engaging his hips to get the extra length on his kicks. Yeah, that's good. Some very fast. Clinch work, some knee work going in. Brad turning his back. Oh. And, and there's that Jazz's high kick he was just telling us about. Brad's really at his back there. Stand up. Bradley, stand up. Stand up. Oh, that looked absolutely horrendous. But it certainly put some fire in his belly. <laughs> it has. Certainly woken him up.
Bradsell a little concerned, rubbing his back there in between. And a fast twist. Brad seems to be really struggling with his back there. With the, with the amount of adrenaline that's going through your system when, it, when you're fighting, yeah. you shouldn't be feeling pain. He's cut as well to the side of the head. Slight cut on the side yeah. of the head as well. Can we see on the, uh, can we see a close up? I think we're going to catch a close up here. Just on the outside of his left eye. I'm not exactly sure what, what caused that. Seconds away. Round three. Brad's also cut, uh, Jazz is also cut to the top of his head, on the left-hand side of his head. I think both guys are, are suffering, the, suffering the same thing. Yeah. Brad's is up. Obviously, in a, in a worse position over the eye. I think the fast the fast left kick of Jazz is, is what's what's doing the doing the most damage. No plowing allowed. You can just see just see that that blood on the top of Jazz's head. Yeah. So, Phil, what advice would you be giving to Brad? To Brad? I just try and work. I'd work them. I try and work him more in the clinch, but he's not really doing much. You know, when he's in the clinch, um, he's, he's turning think, sideways all the time yeah, and nullifying think, things. Yeah, I think I think we saw in the in the first round the the relative ease that that Brad had in, in pulling Jazz's head Seconds down. Seconds away. He hasn't really capitalised on that. He hasn't, I don't, no. no. I, don't, I don't think the, the corner team spotted it. To be honest, he... he Round four. Seems a little limited with the, uh, with the clinch work techniques. Yeah. Uh, Jazz seems to have got a bit more, bit more knowledge. Yeah. That, I'm not sure how, how much the, uh, the back injury is, is phasing Brad. Yeah. Well, it does seem to be turning his back. And that's the second second time that he's hurt his back there. Straight in. Well, it's sorted up now. This one. <laughs> it's, uh, it has walk, walked on to the high kick. Yeah, yeah. Walked on to that left hook. And again. 
Jazz timing that left hook perfectly. Each time when Brad's been running in. Some good head movement. Brad being very dramatic. You can hear him, hear him screaming. Oh. Nice high kick attempt there by Jazz. Yeah, he seems to be having a lot of trouble with that back. He's really struggling with his back. I'm not happy about this. No, no. I feel very uncomfortable about this. I think he's done more damage to his back than he realises. Yeah. yeah. The trouble is, we uh, we adrenaline. You're not going to know until you've had to change rooms. Exa then. Exactly. It'll be something exactly. serious. And they, this is this is where a corner team have to be taking responsibility for their fighter. This is when a medical team should should be having an awareness of everything that's going on. These are the things that we were seeing with um, some, of the, some of the boxers that have, that have suffered brain damage. Yeah. People like Michael Watson, when they get the, get the eye twitch, they, they start, start suffering, suffering brain damage and stuff like that. It's, it's painful to see. And when you see someone suffering such a dramatic injury like that, fighter's instinct says that you keep on going. Yeah. This is where a corner team have to look after the fighter's best interest. Seconds away. I feel very uncomfortable if the if the corner team let him carry on. The fifth and final round. I mean, the thing is, is because he was being so dramatic over it. <laughs> I took that as a massive single uh, signal of, of of pain and ultimate yeah. distress. So almost disengaging from the fight. But then he comes back. So, is he being a drama queen? I'm not exactly, sure. we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's always dangerous for, for fighters to be clinching on the, on the lower back, hyperextended, because that is a foul. It's a massive foul. It's one of the, one of the, one of the major, major things that... Uh, the referees should be looking out for hyper extending of the back. Yeah. Brad chasing, chasing Baz da Brad down, and he's hurt his back again. <laughs> Limbering back up. The Siam Camp Corner thinking that they, they've possibly done enough. Going back to the push kick, controlling the range, controlling distance, trying to protect protect the win that he thinks he's got. I'm not too sure either way. Very close fight. What do you reckon, Phil? Which way do you reckon? I'd, I'd, which way I'd, do you think I'd, he's going to go? For, I'd go for Jazz because he's, he's had the better technique as well. Uh, and he, he's been scoring pretty well, I think, with some of his kicks. Ladies and gentlemen, um, just while we collect in the judges' scorecards, would you please it's show your appreciation for Brad, both Brad fighters? Brad was unorthodox in the way he was fighting, you know. Yeah, but I think it's because he was unorthodox and the massive distress that he was showing about bending, it, bending his back, back yeah. over backwards, 
I have to I have to say that they that the award has to has to go to Jazz. Yeah. Like you say, you, you, you didn't score an effect as well, and if you're showing you're in pain, it's going to go against you with the judging. It certainly is. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to our judges' scorecards, and we have a unanimous decision with all three judges at ringside in favour of your winner from the Wicker Camp right here in Sheffield, Jazz! Meet. Would you please continue your warm applause for a gallant opponent from Sam Camp Oldham, Brad Tunnicliffe.